A DNS hijacking campaign took aim at the core of the domain name service. Joe, I understand you have a DNS hijacking story for us. Yeah, so um, Brian Krebs did a real deep dive on DNS espionage, which is the sort of cover name for a big host of DNS hijacking events that came out. Um, Talos re received, uh, released a blog in November, and then CrowdStrike and FireEye followed in January with additional details. And Brian Krebs just kind of, he goes through all the, you know, the list of domains that were known to be hijacked and really gets deep, you know, like Brian Krebs does, into what exactly happened. And he always tries to get to sort of attribution about who might be responsible. Um, so in this case, um, you know, the blog posts all listed a, a block of domains, primarily Middle Eastern government services, like the UAE's email server was on there. Um, and basically what happened is, uh, you know, the, the DNSs were hijacked and he found the times of each and, and then shortly after certificates changes were made um, and, and, you know, he's using Farsight and a company called Security Trails to, to monitor the passive DNS, see when these changes were made. Um, and then the real interesting part is after the DNS was hijacked, um, they take a next step to go after the registrars. These malicious actors went so far as to go after the, the messaging protocol, EPP, that allows DNS registrars to communicate. Now the concern is that with that being compromised, you know, should other DNS agents trust EPP messages from these registrars? So the, you know, the repercussions are fairly significant. Um, but, you know, Brian Krebs always does a great job. I, I kind of cue in closely to his stuff because he's, he does a real good analysis. And even if somebody else has already released the newsworthy stuff, he'll kind of get into the details. Yeah. And As opposed to kind of a very high level thing where we got from some of these other reports early, uh, in the previous months, this got really down into the meat and potatoes of uh, uh, what really happened and to who. And in this case, which he doesn't always do, he did list some um, sort of ways to recover, things to protect against, which is usually something we do. But he, you know, obviously mentioned DNSSEC as something you want to enable if you can. Um, you know, kind of like also our IoT discussion, don't ignore your DNS. You know, there's some companies that don't monitor for changes to DNS. Um, make sure you're aware of what's going on with your DNS. Uh, use two-factor authentication on your front end, which we've talked about. And then also um, put in an access control list for your DNS. Uh, and actually, there's also a feature, which is one of the ways the, the registrar is recovered is, and they, they, they said in the story that they wish they had done this before, but you know, everybody mm -hmm. wishes after, right. is right. lock your d domain. So you can, you can put in a domain lock that you know, won't allow your DNS to be changed, hijacked, uh, unless a certain set of things are done. Right. You know, it's kind of like locking your credit, you know, Interesting. Uh, so that's that's available now, and that's the type of thing that you know, if at all possible, it would be a smart thing to do. Right. So. Especially if you're a high profile, or you know, government. I mean, pretty email. much everybody is, right? Yeah. You probably every even if it's like a little home domain or something, you know, um, you probably want to make sure that you have your domain registration locked down pretty tightly, yeah. so they can't be um, hijacked or taken over. Um, one, of the, one of the interesting quotes. The, it, for me in this story was, you know, even organizations that were monitoring their DNS might not have caught it. It, um, it depends on how you do your monitoring. Right. There's a quote in here, we had three different commercial DNS monitoring services, none of which caught this. None of them warned us that it had happened after the fact. And my guess is because they only took a snapshot like once a day or something. Right. Ah. Uh, yep. Right. You know, if, if even if you're watching it, if you're not watching it properly, yeah, you, know, you could still be vulnerable for some considerable period of time. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, because yeah. I would imagine they probably went in, they repointed it for 
you know, maybe just a few hours during that period of the day or something, and then repointed it back to where it's supposed to be to kind of cover their tracks. And like you said, yeah. these services that are looking for changes, if they only do daily snapshots, they're not going to see that. Uh, so that's interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for bringing this one. I think it's, uh, like you said, Krebs does a really good thorough analysis here, so I'd recommend people check it out. It's a good read. It shows how, how deep this, uh, you know, compromise went and the extent that this group went to to really get at the, the soul of DNS.